Honorable President of India, Shri Pranab Mukherjee, Honorable Minister for Human Resources Development, Shri Prakash Javdekar Ji, Honorable Minister of State for Human Resources Development, Shri Yamin Pandey, Respected Secretary of the President, Shri Ovita Paul, Chairman NBA, Professor Surendra Prashad, Additional Secretary of Human Resources Development Ministry, Shri R. Subramanian, and heads of the top ranked institutions present here to grace today's occasion. Greetings to all of you on this momentous occasion of the award ceremony of India Rankings 2017. The India Rankings 2017 were released by the Honorable Minister for Human Resources Development on 3rd April 2017. Today we will call to honor the top ranked institutions in the six categories under which the NIRF 2017 framed. The National Institutional Ranking Framework has been issued in September 2015 with a view to measure the output of higher educational institutions every year. In this second edition of India Rankings, a total of about 3,000 institutions have participated. These include universities, engineering institutions, management institutions, pharmacy institutions, general degree colleges, and others. Many of these have participated in multiple disciplines, adding to a total of about 3,319 participants across disciplines. Under the NIRF, we measure the performance, of the, we measure the performance on the basis of five sets of variables, teaching learning resources, research and professional practice, graduation outcomes, outreach and inclusivity, and perception. The data is submitted by the institution and is verified for its integrity by a set of experts. The data pertaining to the research has been taken from third party sources like the Scopus and the Web of Science. The ranking parameters have been finalized by the NBA and the exercise has been carried out by an IT team in Infinet Center Gandhinagar working with experts in the NBA. India Rankings 2017 have ranked institutions in the six categories, namely an overall category, then management, engineering, universities, colleges, and pharmacies. The overall category has provided a common overall rank across all the disciplines for those institutes which have more than 1,000 enrolled students, and this category also includes institutes of national importance. While the broad parameters used for ranking remain the same as last year, some changes have been made this year. These are greater weightage has been given to the highly cited papers and to innovations. The percentile metric has been replaced by a more discriminating metric. All research-related information, including publications, citations, highly cited papers, and even patent information about institutions was collected from third-party databases to obtain an objective and unbiased picture. For perception inputs, a large database of academic and industry peers and employers was deployed in addition to getting inputs from members of the general public. The data submitted by an institution was placed on the website, providing for public scrutiny for greater accuracy. Finally, provision has also been made for the scale of operations of an institute in terms of the size of its student population and graduated doctoral students. As per the declared time schedule in advance, the rankings have been announced on the first Monday of April, the third first Monday of April, which was the third April this year. The ranking list includes 100 institutions from four categories that I have already mentioned. It is expected that India rankings would help in bringing an annual assessment of the performance of our higher education institutions using objective and verifiable, verifiable criteria and would guide the stakeholders in making right choices. I would like to profusely thank the Honorable President of India for agreeing to give away awards to the best institutions on this occasion in today's grand ceremony. I am sure that today's function would inspire all the higher education institutions in our country to perform better in the years to come. And it's clear that the students and our education system would greatly benefit from the catalytic effect that rankings can have on promoting excellence. Finally, I congratulate the top-ranked higher education institutions for their performance and hope that in the coming years, more and more institutions will participate in the national institutional ranking framework and thereby help in creating excellence in the education system of our country. Thank you.
President, my colleague Mahindranath Pandey, dignitaries on dais, and all representatives of institutes and heads of institutes, vice chancellors, and everybody in the audience. I can say national institutional ranking framework has become a rocking success because since last week when we first announced the first part of the ranking, the whole country is debating about it. So I can say ranking is rocking and on TV channels, on radio, or in newspapers, and there are many advertisements also, so we are ranked this much. So I think this is the right spirit, because after all, it is effort to improve the quality. It's different from NAC, because NAC is an accreditation and assessment of standalone institutes, and it is graded. Here, it's a yearly exercise, where you, you will have to be on the toes to keep your face uh, and to keep your face intact or improve upon. Two days ago, on Friday, I was in Goa and I was thrilled when Goa Vice Chancellor said that last time we were this much ranked, this time we have come two notch down. So we have appointed a committee to look into why this has happened and we will want to improve it. So next time we will we'll scale much higher. I think this is the spirit why the ranking has started. It's all about competitive efforts in competition to improve the quality, overall quality of Indian higher education because that is what is the requirement. And we are also learning and we are also improving. Now, after these two years' experience, we will also take a stock comprehensively. You can also give some suggestions. There can be suggestions for more categories. There can be suggestions for bringing in some new uh, benchmarks or something. But that also are welcome. And we will then evaluate further. And within the next two months, we'll be ready with a comprehensive thing, which I think will go a long way in the future, which will sustain for uh, more than a decade, uh, so that we will have a very robust ranking framework, which world will also accept. And that is what we aim at. Thank you, and all the best. For India Rankings 2017, more than 3,000 institutions from various disciplines have submitted data, and a total of 600 institutions have been ranked this year as the six different categories. These are overall engineering, universities, colleges, management, and pharmacy. First rank, Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. Receiving the award is Professor Anurag Kumar, Director. Second rank, Indian Institute of Technology, Madras. Receiving the award is Professor Bhaskar Ramamurthy, Director. Third rank, Indian Institute of Technology, Bombay. Receiving the award is Professor Devan Kakkar, Director. Fourth rank, Indian Institute of Technology, Kharagpur. Receiving the award is Professor Partha Chakravarti, Director. Fifth rank, Indian Institute of Technology, Delhi. Receiving the award is Professor Ram Gopal Rao, Director. Sixth rank, Jawaharlal Nehru University, Delhi. Receiving the award is Professor N. Jagdish Kumar, Vice Chancellor. Seventh rank, Indian Institute of Technology, Kanpur. Receiving the award is Professor Indranil Manna, Director. Eighth rank, Indian Institute of Technology, Guwahati. 
Receiving the award is Professor Gautam Biswas, Director. With him is Professor Parmeshwar K. Ayyu. Indian Institute of Technology, Rurki, 9th rank. Receiving the award is Professor U.P. Singh, Acting Director. 10th rank, Banaras Hindu University, Varanasi. Receiving the award is Professor Girish Chandra Tripathi, Vice Chancellor. In the engineering category, the first rank goes to Indian Institute of Technology, Madras. Receiving the award is Professor Bhaskar Ramamurthy, Director. In the management category, the first rank goes to Indian Institute of Management, Ahmedabad. Receiving the award is Professor Shailesh Kandi, Dean. In the universities category, the first time goes to Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. Receiving the award is Professor Anurag Kumar, Director. In colleges category, the first time goes to Miranda House, Delhi. Receiving the award is Dr. Pratibha Jolly, Principal. In the pharmacy category, the first rank goes to Jamia Hamdar Delhi. Receiving the award is Professor Sayyid Etesham Hasnan, Vice Chancellor. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, Mr. Prakash Javrigar, Indian Minister of Human Resource Development, Dr. Mandranath Pandey. MOS Human Resource Development, Mr. Samita Paul, Secretary to the President, Sri Kewal Kumar Sharma, Secretary, Department of Higher Education, Minister of HRD, Sri R. Subramanian, Additional Safety, Department of Higher Education, Ministry of HRD, Dr. Surendra Prasad, Chairman, National Board of Accreditation, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I am indeed happy to have this opportunity of meeting the academic community and academic administrator once again. I would like to congratulate NIRF, National Institutions of Ranking Framework, for making ranking of the top institutions of India. Almost like a parrot, for the last five years as visitors of a large number of central institutions, I am emphasizing on actively participating in the international rating system, as I do believe, participation in the rating will not only start a proactive measures taken by the institution, but it will also make them sensitive to the operational aspects of the ranking procedures so that it can facilitate in any other activities. And I am happy that two Indian institutions have already appeared in the list of the first 200 top international academic institutions rated by the important rating agencies internationally acclaimed. I believe we had all the qualities and ingredients necessary for being <coughs> ranked in order of merit and excellency in the academic institutions. 
particularly in the institutes of technology our institutes of science research and institutions of management which have a very high degree of campus recruitment and those who have been recruited they have provided the leadership in running the industrial corporates all over the world and with acclamation their managerial efficiency and technical competence have been recognized keeping that in view when the hrd ministry decided to have the framework and national ranking facilities i am indeed very happy that it will facilitate our institutions to be ranked more and more in the top class world institutions measured by the internationally acclaimed rating agencies there is no doubt in the last two decades there has been substantial expansions of physical infrastructures in the establishment of the new institutions right now when i am speaking before you we have more than 760 universities more than 30 36000 degree colleges 16 iits 30 and iits iiacrs iims and a large number of other institutions therefore the accessibility to the higher education has increased no doubt established have been institute established uh, establishment of the institutions in remote areas remote areas have also facilitated the accessibility of the students belonging to remote areas of the country but certain other problems which are consequential to the mere physical expansions have also arisen which are to be tackled first is the availability of the quality faculty members we don't have large number of institutions are suffering from short of high grade faculty members and teachers number 2 we are having the problem of retaining our talents every year large number of talented students go abroad because they consider that the facilities environment opportunities available abroad in the foreign universities are superior to those available in our country this is the reverse picture in the earlier days indian in universities attracted mighty minds both in form of teachers and students from abroad and that continued for several centuries but after that it has been deteriorated and now indian students migrate to foreign countries and we can reverse this trend if we have excellent institutions in our country that will facilitate to retain the talent that will also facilitate to have the teachers the third thing which i feel we should address and some of our shortcomings could be bridged up quickly that is to take full advantage of the technological development which have taken place 
now it is through the networking it will be possible for us to have our institutions access to the teaching of the top class professors teaching in universities abroad our students can listen to them have their lecture sitting in their own classroom but another aspect on which we must emphasize which will improve our quality that is constant interaction between the faculty members and students with their counterparts in other parts of the world world is fiercely competitive technological changes are taking place almost at the net breaking space and every technology has its adverse impact because it is disruptive to adjust this disruption in the technology and technological evolution <coughs> and to proceed further is surely a difficult task but nonetheless we shall have to do it and our teachers and students have the competence the fourth point on which I, <clears throat> i would like to emphasize that we must have the inspired teachers no other person can ignite the mind of the students and attract them than an inspired teacher and even in the present circumstances there is no doubt of inspired teachers available in different parts of the country what is needed to have contact with them and have a networking so that their services can be utilized for the betterment of the students teachers and the faculties as a whole finally we shall have to keep in mind we aspire to occupy the rightful place in the committee of nations in other words we want to be a first class power in the world economically technologically military and for that one of the most essential ingredient necessary is to build up the knowledge economy power comes from technology technology comes from knowledge therefore constant cultivation of knowledge in different aspects research innovation practice sharing views exchanging ideas cross fertilization will enrich our teachers our students and truly we will be able to create an environment of knowledge knowledge is power and power is the key to have access to the facilities all over the world therefore a country having 1.3 billion people more than 600 million people who are in the age group below 25 the vast potential what we describe as demographic dividend but this demographic dividend will have to be converted into giving two dividends and unless we provide them skill enhance their employable quality enhance the opportunities of employment because all over the world 
in the days of aging population india is emerging as a young nation land of young population as i have told you already 600 million people are in age group below 25 years if we can provide the appropriate skill necessary and make them skilled labor it will add to the productivity not only within the country but outside and i do feel that demography advantage will not start into demography liability which has the potentiality if we fail to utilize them in the proper way and train them to enhance their skill to increase their employability with these words once again i congratulate all the awardees most of them are well known institutions that institutions of repute but this new feather <coughs> added to their cap will surely inspire others to follow their shoes i congratulate them and wish all others to improve their standard so that they can find their place in the next ranking thank you ladies and gentlemen jai hind it is my pleasant duty and proud privilege to propose a vote of thanks firstly we thank honorable president shri pranam mukherjee for motivating the formulation of the ranking system through his visitor conferences in fact the first concept of a ranking has emerged out of the visitors conference that he had conducted and also for honoring the top ranking institutions in this august ceremony i thank our minister shri prakash javdekar for leading the education sector into a bright future with a slew of reforms i thank our minister of state shri mn pandey whose wise counsel has led us in all our ventures i thank shrimati omita paul secretary to president for ably guiding this event and 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 standing with us in every effort that we have made our secretary shri kevel sharma has been the leader of this team which has brought this entire exercise to a fruitful conclusion shri surendra prasad professor who has developed the metrics for ranking and also conducted this entire exercise very smoothly ably assisted by dr anil nasa i thank the infinite team uh, dr jagdish and mr abhishek and their team which has formulated a uh, full proof software which helped in ranking in a very smooth manner i thank the heads of all this top rank institutions who found time to come here it is your systematic and dedicated hard work which has brought laurels to your institution and to the country as a whole and we wish that you continue this good work and take as our president has exhorted our march into the global rankings successfully finally i thank our team mhrd the entire team which has worked day and night for making this entire function success thanks a lot